welcome back to another supporter stream here. And of course, uh, like usual, if you want to hang out after the show and you're a supporter, you just don't want to be on camera or on the show, we do hang out for you know at least a half an hour or so after the show. So you can jump on there. All of the links for that conference call are in the supporter networks. Uh, also, if you've not uh, downloaded the audiobook for the last science fiction story, today, I believe, is your last day to do that. Maybe tomorrow. I don't know. It expires tomorrow. I just don't know if it expires like tonight at midnight or tomorrow night at midnight. And then tomorrow, the next story will go live. So stay tuned for that. And I already have the audiobook set up for that. And uh, that'll be kind of fun. So anyway, uh, we're going to dive right on into our topic and then we'll get into all of our exciting pleasantries and everything else uh, after we're done. Make sure everybody's unmuted. Everyone is. All right. So uh, today we wanted to talk about this download manager backdoor in Linux. Uh, this is affecting a dev package and uh, it's not really as much just about this one piece of software as it is a general warning to people using Linux. And uh, as uh, one person wrote up here on the, the comment feed prior to going live, I thought all the code was audited. Yes, all the code in your repository is audited. This is code that was not from the repository. And that really is what the uh, the background was about. Anybody want to say anything before we jump into the actual articles here? Well, the way I understood the article was similar like when I was using Windows 7. And if you went to a uh, not so well-known site to get a piece of software, you would get bundled a bunch of extra software to maliciously a cripple your machine in with that exe file that installed what you wanted yep yeah uh, all that extra like toolbars and stuff like that <laughs> well the only reason i knew that is because i wanted a program that was called mp3 gain and they had it for windows mm -hmm. um and i i found a website that actually had the download for that and at that time i had avg uh firewall installed back when they made a good product and went down the drain and mm -hmm. that product would actually catch everything that was coming and going out of the computer. And you had to allow it or block it or permanently allow it. So I, I, I EXE opened and installed this package. And all of a sudden I had all this extra crap trying to get out of my computer that's trapped in it. <laughs> yeah, be careful, especially if you're downloading something randomly from online. Salvo, so any early comments here? Yeah, it's a familiar story about um, uh, being careful about where you download so software from. Yeah. Um, so, so getting on to the story itself, this is the application free download manager, which they have a, you know, Mac, a Windows, a Linux version. So you can go onto their site and download it. And um, so what this article did, these guys, security researchers, what they were looking at is seeing what was going on because this seemed to only impact Linux users, but it didn't impact every Linux user. And that's what made it so tricky. It's an application that not everybody's going to install. The Linux repository might have better applications or similar applications. And then it would really only trigger the malicious install on a handful of downloads. And so it really hit under the radar for a number of years. And we'll get to what actually caused that to happen <laughs> at the end here. Um, but going over the article first, um, so Linux machines have become more and more prominent targets of certain threats. Um, some of this is because of uh, it's become easier to write universal programming languages that you can just click of a button and deploy it across every uh, every operating system type. You know, when you had to decide where it was going to be, uh, uh, where it's going to be uh, compiled to, that was made it a little bit more difficult. But now we got these nice, easy programming languages for the hackers to go in and easily push their malware everywhere. Because, you know, if we had to spend an extra 50 hours making it work for Linux, we wouldn't do that. But if it's an extra click of a button, Sure, why not, you know? <laughs> and so that's what happened. So according to the telemetry, 26,000 unique Linux samples appeared in the first half of 2023. And what they will demonstrate is certain uh, certain uh, issues with a few of these articles. So what happened is there was this uh, domain name, this fdmpkg.org domain with a 
a random string of jibber jabber up before those, which definitely looks totally legit. Okay. Now, um, part of where the uh, totally legit part looked like is a small percentage of the people who clicked to download from this direct website. Uh, then what ended up happening is um, uh, what ended up happening there was the um, uh, it would go to deb.fdmpkg.org, which looks legit, and that really is the uh, is the the issue there. And so uh, what they did here is they looked at the here's the malicious domain repository, so you can see it's non secure deb.fdmpkg.org. So that's what we see. And then uh, this is that free download manager, which would download and it would kind of work. The problem is it was bundled with a bunch of extra stuff. Now we see uh, we see some some source lists in here. It's going to this malicious file. Uh, you can see where it's adding the deb repository uh, inside your sources. And uh, this one here is specifically for Ubuntu. And then uh, what this would do is this would cause some DNS-based backdoors. It would open up some ports, some IP um, addresses. And then what the thing would basically do is go on and monitor what you're doing in Bash, send some things home. So here is the, um, the malicious server, the malicious package. This gets added on, and uh, there's a, a cron job that it sets to run every 10 minutes, which is basically stealing uh, things and then uploading that to a server, and then it adds an extra backdoor. So that's the basic idea about what happens to be going on. Uh, so the problem is, is that, again, not every time somebody clicked the link did it give you the malicious one, uh, but... Sometimes it did, sometimes it didn't. So you can see right here uh, where you went directly to the proper website and then the download was from the malicious uh, malicious site. We'll get into where that came from in a bit. But the first point I wanted to talk about, uh, first, first let's go ahead and have a look at this. So this is the free download manager um, official statement about it, basically saying, yeah, we uh, something got messed up uh, between 2020 and 2022. If you downloaded this, it's very possible you have the malicious version. Now they say here that a uh, an update miraculously fixed this. Wow. I knew exactly what happened as soon as I read that. That's our last point. Uh, but generally the, the point here is that rather than going in and relying on software from the internet, it is always best to use the more safer places. The, the, software repository is very safe. Your flat packs are very safe. And as much as it pains me to say it, snap should be safe. However, there's that issue back in 2015 where they came out and said, well, we're trusting our publishers, not auditing the code. So, eh, especially when you see the types of things that are on there, like multiple versions of simple screen recorder that are still there, that are still unofficial. And at the same time, you still have a situation where uh, they're saying, we're not going to bother auditing the code. We are just going to, um, uh, we're just going to trust the developer. And then these software packages are like Chinese developers that are completely unofficial that we, okay, I hope you're not, I hope this isn't the level of guy you're trusting as your developer. But in general, Snap, Flatpak, and your repository should be safe. All right, what do you guys have to say about that part, point one, before we dive into that? And while you guys are talking, I need to send a text message. Somebody just tried to give me a call. Okay, the first thing that I noticed in this article is you have to actually download a deb package. So it'd be free downloadmanager.deb. That would get it into your downloads folder. In order to make this thing active, you have to, for me, it would be GDEB on Debian. And it usually requires that you put in your root password to make it proceed. And then you're, you're up the creek without a paddle because you just gave it permission to do that. Um, there's several things here that give you a chance to second look this, but um, apparently it was so well disguised, it fooled just about everybody till now. Yeah, yeah, what I noticed is that is that uh, it looks like uh, this is our um, proprietary program, um, uh, so they are creating uh, Debian packages. 
So if you're using any other system than a, a Debian-based uh, system, you're not affected by this in, in any case uh, whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Well, there, there, there are plenty of tools out there that directly convert Deb packages to RPMs and RPMs back to Deb packages. Yeah, well. but the installation method of the uh, uh, of the uh, uh, plugin uh, of the of the malware specifically needs the Debian install um, PostScript in order to do its uh, to do its the things so of converting this to RPM would uh, neutralize uh, the post uh, thing. Okay, mm -hmm. well, they're showing it being used on Ubuntu, so... Well, because know. Ubuntu can install deb files. Yeah. It's not like the, the deb, dot .deb isn't just Debian exclusive. A dot .deb is, can be used on any downstream from Debian. So Debian's Ubuntu's Linux Mint, um, Linux Mint Debian Edition, you know, anything with Debian as its core. Uh, or yeah, anything the, that otherwise supports .deb packages. And as far as I understand, and as far as I understand uh, this is uh, uh, on the uh, actual uh, repository. It's not uh, some random... Uh, um, uh, the, the packages are uh, legit. They just infected the uh, um, build system uh, using the web interface uh, somehow, uh, which gained access to um, uh, insert something into the post. <laughs> Yeah. Well, when you gave it its root password, it automatically installed the files to run a cron job. Yeah. Yes. Which is easy to do in Debian. Yes. yes. You can almost start a cron job without root access. It's it's very, very tiny window there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but in order to, for the, the, the cron job to do it, um, to uh, infect the whole system and not just the user, it needs uh, root access, so, which is why it's this, this guy as a normal package. Well, that's why there's a secondary file that's actually packaged with this that goes to another directory yeah. that gets pinged by the cron job every 10 minutes. Yeah, let, let's um, let's move on to um, the idea here is that the, the first and foremost thing is you need to be really careful about where you're sourcing your software from because this is just one example. Other examples could indeed happen. And so... The fact that you get to a site, and even th this is this is what we'd call a man-in-the-middle attack, uh, in the sense that you're downloading the software from the official website, and they inject themselves into the middle of your click-to-access and your download. Um, and so the only way to really spot that this was happening was to pay attention to the um, uh, pay attention to the download link. It was up here somewhere. Where'd that download link go? Dude, it was here. Where is it? Dude, the download link was over here. Hold on. Yeah, here it is here. Um, and so um, if you went to the legitimate website and then it goes to the dab.fdmpkg.org, that's the malicious one. The correct one should have been coming from file two dot um, uh, free download manager dot org. So double checking these. Now, the downside is uh, I, I clicked on the download link just to see what would happen. And on Firefox, it doesn't give me this prompt, at least how I have my browser configured. I think if I set my browser to, um, to confirm every download, it probably would. Uh, I did not have that set up when I was testing this out. Uh, and so I do not know what source this came from without deeper investigation. So I did not get this prompting window to evaluate where mine was coming from. And that's part of the problem is we can't always do that. But maybe some maybe um, adding an extra security protocol to make sure and uh, always saving your downloads as rather than doing it more user friendly, quicker, directly to the same spot might actually solve that. But you need to look and make sure the download the the packages you're downloading are legitimately coming from the places you're downloading them from. This, yeah. this, and the this, saving and the saving grace uh, seems to be that for the, for for those who have installed the uh, an official uh, Debian repository would not have been affected by this uh, because uh, they would uh, fetch every update from the uh, actual uh, upstream source, whereas a small minority would have clicked the uh, uh, the, the link. To the um, uh, bad side. Mm -hmm. it's now, is there is there an official Debian repository version of this application? I didn't even look. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, anyway, so somebody look at that for us. Um, but uh, 
yeah, if you use it from the repository, a lot better chance. Now, there is some telltale signs if you do have this one, the file paths. Um, again, there's the there's a cron D slash collect. There's the var temp cron D, temp BS, which is a bunch of BS, but, you know. And then uh, temp ATD. You can look for those particular directories and see if uh, you're infected by this particular piece of malware. But the point here of being very sure where you're downloading from things from too and uh, how do I know exactly how this happened because I have cleaned up this type of bug many times this is a WordPress hack if we just oh, go ahead boy. and have a look at the WordPress uh, the, the page source uh, you can see uh, down here uh, let's see we got to scroll down a little bit where's that there you go look at this free download manager blog WP includes this WP includes um, is the telltale sign of WordPress um, so that is, uh, that's also, also the other thing, which you can't see on the screen is the URL bar, uh, for whatever reason, Linux Mint does this too. They're also running WordPress. Uh, they don't add the friendly URLs, which helps with SEO. So it's question P equals six, six, four. Great. Thank you. Um, <laughs> not using friendly URLs. That's WordPress's default, believe it or not. Uh, so you have to manually toggle on friendly URLs. But yeah, it was, uh, and then in WordPress, if you have a file system hack, a WordPress system update, as long as the hack is on the files that WordPress is updating in its core, an update will actually clean the malware for you. Uh, that's why WordPress is hacked frequently, but it's also sometimes easy to clean depending on the type of breach it is, because if it's just something in the simple, uh, simple core files, Either a update will fix it or the other way you can fix a WordPress website really easy is to just download a clean copy of the WordPress and overwrite the WP admin and WP uh, includes directories overwriting all the files for on your current server that will push to the most recent version and clear every any malware in any of those two directories. So uh, if you do need a malware uh, a WordPress site fixed, get a hold of me. I do that all the time. I'll give you a good but quote. This also it. shows the importance of um, uh, uh, for uh, public facing uh, services uh, to update uh, the software uh, running. Uh, yeah. Which yep. is what, what uh, closed this bug uh, without them knowing. Yeah. Um, of course, a similar thing happened on Linux Mint before where somebody got into their WordPress core site and installed a malicious file. Now, they caught it within two hours, but if you actually did your um you actually checked the hash of your download you would have caught that it was a malicious file uh and so uh, do we have a ma malicious hash you know just to verify that we have the right one eh, i didn't see any uh on the site but uh that's uh, what you have so here's if you go over here is your windows mac os android and linux and then here's your download option and this is the linux download and if you click on that, of course, you know, it just it's telling me exactly what it is. Of course, you guys can't see the screen, but there you go. Sorry about that. Um, so, you know, it's uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, I can't even see where the where that download is coming from right here, except what you can see down at what I can see at the bottom of the screen is it's coming from files two dot free download manager dot org slash six slash latest slash free download manager dot dep. So. That's kind of what it is. There's official browser extensions, so things like that seem safe. The, the point is, is that this was, we've talked a lot about uh, people hijacking do, uh, ads to do similar domain names and, and basically doing uh, a malvertising campaign. This is even trickier because you're downloading the software from the official site. It's just, as Salbu mentioned, the front facing website was malicious uh, because there was a breach. And so that's the type of stuff we have to be very cautious of, so. So, and of course it was from WordPress. Um, yep. Fixed by an update, common issue. <laughs> Those are kind of my notes. Anybody uh, have anything else to jump in? Hi, Ivan, you made it. How's it going? Yeah, hi. <laughs> How's it going? Yeah, did did so you kick, all... kick your guests to the corner or they just not arrive yet? <laughs> no, they uh, they opted not to come inside, so I didn't oh. have to worry about it. Uh, they opted not to come inside. What are they afraid of the coup? Or, I mean... No, they're just dropping <laughs> a couple of things off. There are some here. Maybe so. they looked at the, the clock and uh, realized, oh, he might have a, a, a camera turned on this one. So. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, this, pro, this package is not anywhere in the Debian repository. 
It is not. So if you wanted this free download manager, you'd have to. I did a full search of the Debian repository and it's not there. Yeah, I didn't think to do that. Um, Is there any other download manager that does something like it? So if I'm understanding correctly, I think this is that download manager where you can download something through it and, you know, if your internet connection gets disrupted, it'll it'll repick itself up. I think that's kind of what it is. Just that um, I have a server still running Debian 10. uh, So, um, and even uh, that have. uh, uh, at least four uh, download managers available for for installation um, uh, for you. So uh, if you need a download manager on Linux, um, um, uh, my advice is uh, to use one of those who um, uh, is available in the um, uh, default package repo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. That's that's yeah. the best best thing to do is just use use the stuff that's available in the repository as much as possible. At least you really know what you're doing. Um, and that's the sad thing is that a lot of people coming from Windows or Mac, you know, more from from Windows to Linux, go online to look for their software instead of in their software manager. Now, I yeah, think this... uh, no, it's um, uh, I uh, I understand why they do that because uh, the first couple of years I, I did the same. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah, I I I, I managed to use uh, Red Hat uh, Linux seven point one for almost two years uh, before someone told me that there was a package manager that you were supposed to use. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? <laughs> this thing's cooler than I thought. <laughs> yeah. And I just happened to go out to uh, LMDE's software manager, and they actually do have a free download manager with a note at the bottom that says, uh, this wrapper is not verified by, affiliated with, or supported by free download manager team. So I don't know what that means. Okay, so that, that that means that somebody has packaged. Is that a is that a uh, snap or or a, I'm sorry, not a snap. Is that a flat pack or something yeah, in the yeah. repository? Yeah, flat, flat pack. pack. Okay, so apparently flat pack um, may have this software, although somebody else had packaged it, not this individual team. So um, apparently, you can still get it from the flat pack repository, which eh, does possibly have the, some of the same issues. Except flat packs are audited a little bit more than our. Um, snaps apparently according to according to snapcraft's own blog uh so all right anything else on this before we uh shift gears and uh just kind of do uh an on-air hangout a little bit um i'd be kind of really suspicious about any package you're looking into like for the longest time we thought we had an issue with uh, uh, audacity mm-hmm. audacity when it got sold was at version 3.0.2 at 3.0.3 was the bad stuff yeah well now they're yeah now they have it in the debian repository as three four something yeah and i'm wondering if the debian team went in and took out the telemetry the issue is a telemetry which you could disable you could opt out of um and i'm wondering if the debian is three is three two four Three, two, four. So it would have all that malware. the The challenge is the Dassey is still the best uh, free and open source stuff we can use for doing audiobook production. Um, and it's from and the so, Debian repository. Yeah. And I don't know if you use the non-free contribute firmware thing if that allows it to go to that uh, install yeah, I, version. I, I guess what I might what I might look at is 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 that in the non-free or is that in the free repository? I don't know because when I installed it, all the the uh, the free firmware junk and everything was already pre-enabled. Well, to to be clear, the free firmware only deals with packages related, like non-free packages related to hardware. So there's mm-hmm. no software that is in there. Um, so that's really what the well, they what come the as free. Was. They come as uh, uh, non-free contribute. Yeah, if it if, in the source um, list. Uh oh, is that is that where it's from? Is the non-free contribute for Audacity? Uh, I don't know how it got in. It got in through a Debian repository. I can tell you that much. Okay. That I actually fished it in through the uh, terminal from the Debian repository. Right, let, me, let me see if I can find it. Like uh, sudo apt install Audacity. Okay. So that's, I'm not looking for that one. I'm looking for the new one. I and this uh, reminds me of something that I uh, thought of while reading the two articles. Uh, 
Um, this is uh, one of the reasons that, uh, that I personally, and, and um, I don't use uh, Ubuntu myself, but if I w uh, was using Ubuntu, this is one of the reasons that I wouldn't use the uh, the uh, extra repositories. Uh, I don't remember the name for it. The, um, uh, there's a command that you can uh, run, which adds a, a user repository in um, Ubuntu, which is hosted on the Ubuntu site, but it is the user who is... Uh, um, who's uh, packaging uh, and uh, so um, uh, whenever I need something extra uh, for my system uh, I use Magea which is uh, RPM based uh, I download the uh, source uh, uh, RPM file and, uh, and I uh, uh, rebuild it uh, myself because then I have control over um, the proposed installation steps and, uh, and I, if, if it does something fishy I can immediately see that, uh, that this is not uh, how it's supposed to be, be done. But, but uh, and then I have a local uh, 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 repository that I add to all of my systems. And I have a public one for a few friends uh, with package that I uh, curate uh, for updates and so on. Uh, um, because I, uh, um, I curate the software and I update it. Uh, and it, uh, other than that, everything else needs to come from the official uh, 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 distribution uh, re uh, repo uh, re repositories. Okay, um, here is some fun stuff, apparently. All right, so first... first. Well, the source list from Debian... Oh, hold, hold when on, it comes I, out... I, I, I got a lot of info here, so let me, let me do this first. Um, so Audacity is 324 in the official free repository, but here's a fun... Uh, there's a question about in Manjaro from two years ago. Is this without telemetry is disabled by default in... Manjaro, but Audacity reverses course on its plans to add opt-in telemetry. So apparently they, they silently reversed it and none of us got the news. Um, so Audacity has adopted self-hosted error reporting in, report, in response to its community rising up against the now scrap plans to use Google and Yandex Analytics. The busy week it has been. So this is dated almost two years ago, right in the middle of the coup if everyone's distracted everyone else. So apparently Audacity is safe now. <laughs> oh, jeez. Good to know. That's kind of what I thought if Debian is actually offering it out to their people because they that, the Debian repository, they go through their software very picky and they don't pick yeah. the newest stuff. Yeah, and that's why I was I was curious because if it's um if it's like if there was telemetry in it, Debian would not have included it. Um, because that's their that's their core philosophy, um, but apparently it is safe. So a week later, pull request landed, uh, turning on strictly optional and disabled by default telemetry, but the optionality of it was not enough to stop the community from erupting. By the end of last week, Kiri was back and said the previous telemetry features were being dropped. Uh, let's see if we have a version number. So apparently Audacity does not no longer has telemetry. No, I didn't even know about this. I mean, and I use Audacity. I, I was not going too far above the uh, uh, the 302, but um, yeah, that's that's good news. <laughs> good to know. Yeah. Um, yeah. PPA is the name, is the uh, name of the Ubuntu user repository that uh, I didn't remember. Yep. Which tells yeah, you how much yeah. I use Ubuntu. <laughs> yeah, PPA allows you to add uh, add custom repositories into Ubuntu. Yeah, and, um, and and I do understand there is a there is a, a use case for it, but uh, the, yeah. this uh, specific case that we are talking about today is the reason that I don't use them. Mm -hmm. That might be the one thing that could slow me down from using LMDE instead of the Ubuntu version of Linux Mint because there's there's two. You can add source lists and key rings. Yeah, you can do that, but uh, there, I mean, there's, Steam there's does two it. packages specifically that I use that have PPAs available if I need them. That is Caden Live and um, uh, OBS. I'm sorry, go ahead, Dan. Um, that you can you can do a lot of that stuff in Debian. I mean, the the, the Debian media uh, website they have their own key ring and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And all you got to do is there's a command to install the uh, the source list um address for the for the repository and a command for the key ring yeah. um Vivaldi does it the same way too yeah and, as long uh, as you uh, turn steam to really turn, uh, does it in a big time yeah no, but as long as you uh, uh trust the source uh, that is uh, uh hosting the uh, uh repository then you mm -hmm. should be all fine 
Yeah, that is the downside of, of adding the extra repositories, the PPAs, the DABs. I mean, there's there's ways to add them to many systems. But yeah, if you do not, if if those sources happen to get hacked or breached, that will yeah. also cause a similar thing to what we were talking about here today. So. Um, I'm going to check in on comments because we haven't done that yet. Uh, thanks, guys, for being patient. Uh, the fact we're just kind of changing things up a little bit uh, just to make sure that when you jump onto the stream, we just right away start talking about that content. And then we'll we'll hang out until roughly 8 o'clock there. Um, so, Kaz, I thought the code was audited. We addressed that one. Open Sousa uh, Tumbleweed here. Doubt uh, this affects me in any way. Nope. <laughs> Except if I'm not mistaken. No, I don't think you can install devs on those or not on, on that one. I know it's RPM by default. Uh, yes, I'm excited waffles. I'm also excited for waffles. So, I mean, if you want to hand me some waffles, man. <laughs> uh, Yas has not failed me yet. Neither has Zipper. There you go. Uh, if you uh, need to download Manager on Linux outside of what comes with your browser, distro, software, re repository, or transmission for torrents. Yep. Amen to that. Hello, Ashton. Production of KOT. Kitty has ran away from the back door. That's right. <laughs> he's actually hanging out by it. He is hanging out on the back door. He's hanging out. He's like literally like wedged right down by the by the uh, sliding door. If the sliding door opened, he'd like fall out. <laughs> Why are you over there? I've never seen him actually lay there. Weird. It's possible because his new favorite spot is sitting right in front of my refrigerator. Uh, but I, that's actually where I keep a folding chair. So he gets really excited when I move the folding chair and he can sit in his favorite spot. But right now the folding chair is there. So he's like, fine, I'm going to find a new favorite spot. Um, anyway, just love to sit around all day waiting to hear back from clients and they decide to do the work. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm not uh, really, uh, <clears throat> when it comes to snaps, I really don't trust them because Ubuntu does not look at them. Um, yeah, they leave that's it up to the concern. The, to the um, packager, the creator, to actually package it. And a lot can happen between the getting to the Snap Store and getting to the repository or from the creator. Uh, um, hold, hold, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead, Dan. I have something to say when you're done. I'm sorry. Well, anyways, you know, that's one reason why Snaps are, are not liked by a lot of people is mm -hmm. that they, they don't feel secure with them. And I don't either. Yeah, um, I feel that. You, I mean, where do you point the finger when something goes wrong? I mean, they've put a political item in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. um, I have to take issue with this one. Jewel says uh, Arch Linux doesn't have this kind of problem. Incorrect. The Arch user repository is a wild west of unaudited. It is. So you have to be really careful about the AUR. This is why... Um, uh, when you're installing things on Arch, I don't mind the AUR. I'll use the AUR before I'll use a snap. <laughs> but uh, I like doing repository and then flat pack and then AUR and then snap. Because that AUR can be a little hairy at times. We have to be careful about that. You yeah. forgot one yeah. item. Oh, what's that? Get the source and build your own. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Get your source and build which, your is own, what, yeah. which is what I do. My, my, my computer's not really capable of doing <coughs> that very well. Yeah. <laughs> like my big streaming computer is, but not not the little micro tower that I run my uh, media center on Endeavor OS. I will yeah. try it for some things that are really, really hard to get. But I find even when I go down that route, my computer's missing a few components to build the package. Yeah. And then you're on a dependency hunt just to build a, a bunch of dependencies. Yep. Yep. Yesterday, I got a strike for saying something bad against my friend Brandon. They mistook it for a bike. <laughs> What is that real? <laughs> naughty, naughty. <laughs> I, oh, I hear the boy. word snap and I just want to go gag me with a spoon. So totally snap, 80s snap, on snap, it. Snap, 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 snap. The problem with that is that uh, there is no spoon. That, that's right. There I, I is know, no spoon. Indeed. That's the worst part of it, too, because it's all <laughs> psychosomatic at that point. <laughs> Brandon was a former manager at the apartment complex who was caught cooking the bucks. Uh oh. Well, so, so is Hunter. <laughs> uh, let's see. This is <laughs> okay. We got to get off of that real quick. Uh, this is layers uh, uh, in the repository. Pretty smart about it from the design standpoint. Deb and SnapD are the two worst I use. Tom, can you raise your mic level? Everyone else is six decibels louder. Are they really? I thought uh, we we should be pretty uh, pretty level. 
Is it just him or is it everyone? Is that who they're talking about? Yeah, what, I don't get it. Me, uh, they talk about my my mic level seem a little lewd, a little low. Yeah. Uh, Linux dude, Dominic Keynes, how's it going there? Uh, here's a legit one. Deb repo dot free download manager dot org. All right. Uh, and the matching signing key. There you go. Thank you. Mm, thought Tom was cut off what by is, two numbers on that WordPress. What website. is that program actually supposed to do? If you uh, uh, click okay. on, a, on a, a big file or something to download, then the, um, uh, it would, um, uh, if you also install the uh, uh, browser, browser add on uh, that they have. It will um, uh, put, uh, uh, send the download to the uh, the link to the download manager, and if for ever, uh, whatever reason the internet um, shuts down for uh, maintenance uh, uh, that happens, uh, it will uh, continue the next time it has an internet connection or the next time that you start your uh, system. Yeah. Most uh, systems have that pre-built in. You can always pause your download in Firefox or even with Steam. If you're if you need to stop the download because you need the bandwidth, you just hit the pause button. Oh, yeah, on but Steam, some yeah. Users but that's, to, some yeah. users want to download uh, things to put into a manager, and then they want to shut down the browser uh, and still have the download going, which is uh, the use case for this type of uh, yeah. software. Oh, okay. Um, uh, download without a, a browser. Are your ISO yeah. files okay? Do you need to re-download them? Well, if you're talking about the Debian ISO files, yes. This is a completely external software. Um, let me give some some small business advice to Mark Yates. Uh, if people are scheduling appointments and not keeping them, you uh, what you need to do is you need to collect a deposit, 30 to 50% deposit when the appointment is scheduled, and uh, that is non-refundable. That's exactly what doctor's offices do, dentist's offices do. If you do not show up for your doctor's appointment or your dentist's appointment, you still have to pay for the time. Uh, so set up, start setting up um, uh, deposits, and if they have to miss their appointment, you can set another one. But the deposit is non-refundable if they don't if they don't show up for their appointment. Uh, let's see. Anyway, delete that dot dev file now. Done being <laughs> cheeky. Big Most questions. doctors' office give you twenty four hours to cancel before you pay. Yep. Uh, like bungee gnome and cinnamon. Yep, I, I agree. I'm not a huge fan of GNOME, but I don't know. I got that that weird mental illness is in my head. I kind of want to install GNOME on that one system to see how it works again. I don't know. It's weird. Apparently, Audacity is good to go. Uh, unless I hear... Uh, if, if anybody else wants to dig into that any deeper and let me know, um, uh, let, me, let me know for sure. But it does appear on the surface right now, it does appear that the... Um, the Audacity download uh, is, or the Audacity no longer has any telemetry. And I, I've been keeping an eye on the Water Fox situation too, and I haven't seen since they the guy wrote a blog that he has he has the project back. I haven't seen a, other pages update with it. Yep. To make it all look uniform. Uh, moving over, we actually have a ton of watching over on YouTube. We have 33 on YouTube. Thank you guys for watching on YouTube. Pa ta nice. Pass it on to your friends. Tomorrow we'll be streaming uh, the weekly news roundup. That's actually higher numbers we've seen for a while. That's kind of fun. Maybe it's just because we talk about backdoors on Linux. Um, all right. Um, we have 17 currently watching on Odyssey. We're over on Odyssey, this guy. Uh, we yeah, got 26 uh, there's over one on comment, uh, There's one comment on... Uh... On the YouTube that I think yep. you missed. Uh, oh yeah, go ahead. Um, I think the uh, that Linux dude they commented that uh, yep. uh, the uh, mal the bad uh, the uh, malware uh, Debian package also installs a Debian repository and they have the uh, uh, a proper signing key. Um, so uh, they clearly they uh, knew what they were doing. If I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. that Linux dude is actually the developer of Farin OS. I I believe it is. Yes. Yes, that is your Farron OS developer. So yeah, but this point like is Farron, still valid that um, that they um, uh, this is not some uh, some um, uh, uh, script kiddies that uh, have found a um, no. fun thing to do. Uh, this is uh, people who actually know what they're doing. The fact that mm -hmm. they're signing their uh, fake uh, Debian packages uh, uh, shows that uh, they mean business. Yeah, that is something to be aware of. So it's it's better to stay inside that repository if you can. Uh, Red Aculus, can't wait for the next story. Hopefully I remember to drop it tomorrow. It's all done. I even have the audiobook done, and I even recorded the 
Um, I recorded the supporters exclusive video to go with it, although I won't release that until next week. <coughs> I want to give people a chance to um, to read the story before I put out the spoilers. Uh, zone alarm. That's why I stick to my distros repo for software. Yep, yep, yep. I think only deb files I downloaded directly were refractor tools. Let's see. Bro, Odyssey has been live streaming now. Dope. Yeah, man. Odyssey live streams. We live stream uh, here 7 o'clock on Thursday. Uh, Eastern Time and 8 o'clock Friday Eastern Time. 8 o'clock Friday is going to be the weekly news roundup. And stick around for the band news on Odyssey. Um, well, Ivan, not Yvonne, Linus's wife. <laughs> I did right. watch a video yeah. about the breakdown. Like, the the uh, apology video from Linus Media. <laughs> Lord. Like, okay, yeah. you're one of the accusations against you is sexual harassment and you make a 69 sex joke. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I beg to differ. Um, if this is the uh, uh, meeting that they had uh, uh, after this, I actually listened to the recording and he didn't do that. This is something that um, the listener is uh, inferring from what happened. Apparently, he is standing on a table when he has this meeting in order for everyone to see him. And when everything is uh, finished, some of them uh, jokingly said that, now are you going to dance on the table or are you going to step down? Hmm. So yeah, this is something I, that, uh, blown out of. Um, this is not what happened. Well, I mean, I, I I'm not commenting specifically on the on whether the person's accusations are are accurate, valid, or whatnot. I haven't looked into any of it at all. What I do know is one of the things they brought in the external investigator just to see if there is any legitimacy to that. But it, to my understanding, in the apology video itself, there was a sex joke. Yeah, I've seen the uh, apology video, and I didn't get it. If 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 there was one, yeah, it was something well, about like sixty nine and stuff. Um, from Luke, I think said it. Yeah, and I tell um, you, I tell you, it's like you know, I bought this screwdriver and everything like that, and ever since I bought it, I suffer the Linus effect, and the Linus effect is I drop everything like he does. Oh really? Well, it's, yeah. they just that that screwdriver is just covered in like Teflon or something. Come on, man. Well, actually, Project <laughs> Farm that dude t t uh, tested the stubby one with a bunch of other ones, and it came out pretty much on top. Really oh, nice yeah. for durability, ratchetability, clicks, pause, and all that other junk I, in it. I just know when I needed to take apart an iPhone once, I went to Home Depot and got a ten dollars tiny ratchet kit that happened to have the Pentalobe two. Uh, the Pentalobe was it? Pentalobe two. I think whatever one is specific to the iPhone, I'm like, perfect. I don't need the iFixit tools. I found them for 10 bucks at Home Depot. <laughs> I've, I've got this thing, and it's got all different bits and stuff like that, and it works just fine. I yep. got it at uh, Home Depot, and yep. it's perfectly fine. Yep, this yep, was, yep. Uh, this makes me sad when people add Ubuntu PPAs to Debian. Oh, no, don't make up Frankadebian. Frankabian. Uh -oh. It's Frankabian. There you go. <laughs> Uh, snap sir cancer make my own app images there you go would you consider doing a video explaining se linux and app armor and the difference between them or is this beyond it's mostly beyond my scope of knowledge but i would love to take the time to sit down and learn that so i actually planned out a few different videos and um what i think i'm gonna do is i want to take like one more day off of videos to do a little bit better job on the videos i do so i think i'm gonna drop Sunday video and of course we generally don't do a Monday video or maybe I should drop I don't know that two days in a row without a video would be Sunday and Monday I don't know no no it's Tuesday we don't usually do a video so Sunday and Tuesday wouldn't have a video and then what I want to do is try and rotate a tinfoil hat time in once a month a tutorial in once a month and a couple of other uh, random good news stuff once a month Just basically get get a, a few more things with a little bit more stuff uh, going on um, yeah, let's see. Um, uh, George Bowers giving us links to jazz music, I guess, on Rumble. Okay. Um, for your download managers, also in the Mint repos. Yeah, I think that's the, the, uh, unofficial flat pack, I think is what people are saying. One over there twitching out. Um, I don't see anything over there on D Live. Don't see anything over there on Locals. Well, I'm remembering. Let's go ahead and see. Uh, it's just me and Ivan over there on the live stream on Odyssey. Hi, Ivan. 
Hey, guy. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. I think we've gotten to the bottom of those. Cube's intro video. Oh, yeah, I do need to go in. That's one of the things I should add to my list to start looking at uh, Start looking at some more Cube stuff. I should need to just dig through all of the Cube's videos and grab all the comments and see if there's anything else I can do there. Uh, Linus the dropper. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Whatever happened to DistroTube? I think he's still around doing stuff. Yeah, he put out two videos this week. Can confirm having re-downloaded the sample. The legit, they have a different signing keys. Hmm, okay. Uh, Ten dollar HyperTuff Electronics Toolkit from Walmart a few Christmases ago. And it has worked great, except the plastic picks have worn down and need new picks. There you go. DT's on the roof. What? All right. Yeah, I the last one. What type of noise is up on my DV, roof? DT put out the government's secret microchip. <laughs> Micro secretly microchipping people was his last video. Oh yeah, of course. All right, let me. Uh, I found a really good uh, camp spot. I was uh, for. I got there Saturday and uh, skipped church on Sunday because it was just such a good spot. I had been driving. I think I drove. I don't know, maybe close to a thousand miles in one week. Just didn't stop. It's like okay, I found a good camp spot. I had full good open sun, beautiful spot. So I just kind of hung out there. So I'll show you guys where I was this last week. I probably could have stayed here, but I wanted to, to move on here. So there's there's the old van where we're streaming this from. Of course, right now we're we're not in that beautiful scenery, um, but uh, here's looking out my uh, my work window. So that's right behind me there. Uh, beautiful, beautiful place. See you guys on the you guys on, on the call. You'll have to uh, you'll have to uh, uh, wait for it to cycle on. Twenty second delay <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Anyway, uh, so here's uh, some more of the campground. Sadly, they planted a bunch of trees, so in about five to ten years, it's going to have tree cover on everywhere. I hate, like, campsites in the east are so bad because, like, they're forgetting the fact that some people run exclusive solar, and it makes it extraordinarily difficult to find a good campground and stay there for a while because it's like most of the campgrounds I know of in the east, they have they just plant trees everywhere, and it's just like, Sure, you've given us a nice shady spot. Can you give me a spot completely in the sun so I can stay charged? That was one of the no, reasons they, I stayed. I was able to get the batteries completely charged. They want to make sure their birds have a place to crap. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So there's my yeah. little spot there. I had my little, you can see right in front of the van, that little green pouch is my solar oven. I cooked two full meals in this, exclusively in the solar oven. Greta would be happy. Um, you know, I didn't have to turn on the engine at all. Uh, I almost, I think I cooked with propane once. I did the induction oven and I did uh, pulled pork barbecue and I did a ham and bean soup, uh, both in the solar oven. So there you go. There's a wider angle view of the spot there. And then here's just a few other close-ups. Uh, we saw some blue herrings. Uh, we saw a couple bald eagles circling overhead. My neighbor actually was seeing some cottonmouth snakes. I didn't see any of those, but uh, uh, it's beautiful spots, though. So, a really nice spot. And this is Illinois of all places. Go figure. I, I tend to avoid Illinois, but uh, and tended up uh, tended up being uh, being a pretty good uh, pretty good time. So there you have it. There's uh, there's where I was most of the week where I did work. If you guys are new to the channel, yes, I've, I do this whole stream and production and everything from the van. <laughs> All right. Uh, solar is dead. Find a river to power everything. Yeah, <laughs> right. If you think finding like places to charge your solar panels is hard, you should try finding places to run, run uh, hydropower, <laughs> you know. Hmm. Let's see. Other way job here is done. Stay safe. Don't blindly install packages. Amen to that. Thanks for hanging out over here. Uh, apparently, Odyssey just completely crashed out on me. Like both my tabs instantly. It does died. that. It's finicky. It's fragile. All right. Let's let's reload that. Let's reload that. Let's see what happens. Hey, are we back? Hey, I think we're back. There you go. Okay. Speaking of solar power, uh, here uh, where I am in Norway, we are uh, and further north. Uh, we are in, in a month month's time. We are entering uh, this uh, type of the time of year where uh, at least um, um, I don't see the sun. Uh, of, uh, the sun doesn't rise uh, uh, from the horizon uh, for um, the full months of the year. Um, we can well, still you're totally in the dark. 
Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, we have daylight, but we, uh, the sun doesn't uh, rise up. Uh, uh, you don't uh, get to see the orange glowing thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's um, a street, street light in the sky. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Um, I'm not sure when I will drive through Spokane again. I, I, I wish I knew you were in Spokane when I was there last year because for whatever reason, my GPS decided the most expedient way to get around Spokane, Washington last year was to drive right down the main street at night on a Friday. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I forgot to vet my path. Um, of course, when I was getting to that campground, the the state forest has this like very well maintained gravel road that goes straight to it, well signed, well marked, well maintained. The GPS wants me to go five more miles down the road, one little mile up, and then up a road that is unmaintained with grass growing out the middle. No GPS, we're not doing that. <laughs> so. Yeah, I remember a couple of years, like, um, five or six years ago, when I was plotting a route uh, to visit a friend uh, um, and uh, drive for uh, seven hours or so uh, to get there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and when I um, I used a uh, uh, on the region map site in order to do this uh, first, uh, and then I checked. Um, I like to check um, the routes uh, that uh, because there was some. Uh, uh, straight things uh, along the uh, along the way, so I zoomed in and um, yeah, so it so it will uh, it wanted me to um, after a few hours uh, turn right to uh, um, uh, off the highway and then uh, drive a couple of kilometers uh, along the highway and then get back up uh, because apparently doing that uh, was uh, ten meters shorter, <laughs> but it was not faster. Uh, so staying on the highway doing. Um, uh, doing 60 is uh, still faster than um, you know, taking that little detour uh, for um, 25 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, my GPS was smoking some uh, some Biden fuel. Um, but, uh, that's, I, I actually do call it the, uh, the, the R word in chief in my vehicle because my GPS, my GPS likes finding the worst route ever and rooting me. Like I just crossed the Mississippi. It's like, take a take a right here. Down you that dirt have, road? No. You, and I have it explicitly set to not go down dirt roads unless it's no other option. You must have a true so. satellite GPS. Well, well, the thing is, is that the um, the GPS worked great until I wanted to update the maps. And then when I updated the maps, it forced to update the firmware. And the new firmware sucks. Um, yeah, I, got, I got one of them Garmin Nuvi things that I've had since yep. I was working. Every yep. once in a while, them things will take you on a goose chase that's like, Leaves you where? Where am I? How do I get yeah, out of here? Yeah, it's like it takes you on a map, you know, the road that time forgotten. So I actually, I actually edit, like I, I, um, uh, I'll, I'll audit my roads a couple different ways uh, before they, taking them, at least for for major major travel. You know, I kind of like to roughly know where I'm going. So like tomorrow, I'm gonna go up to. Uh, up to a city, and then I know I need to take a couple of little odd things. The GPS is probably going to try and take me to this very short thing to carve one mile off that's going to go up and down mountain passes, which I'm going to completely reject. Uh, but let's go. Let's go. Let's do. Yeah. I um, have um, my uh, GPS is uh, this little thing. It's a uh, Dakota 20. It's a Garmin uh, device. And um, yeah. um, for those who are using oh, Garmin. Show that again. Um, I, I just put your view up on it. Oh yeah, yeah. That's like a that's a uh, like a field GPS. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, and it has an eight hour but uh, uh, battery life. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, one feature that it has is that uh, uh, you can, um, uh, which I think is uh, uh, it's uh, shared with all the Garmin units, is that you can uh, decide what type of modes uh, uh, modes it has. So mm -hmm. it has uh, a driving modes, which means that. It will uh, only show uh, show you directions on the roads that you are legally allowed yep. to drive on. Yeah, Whereas, this is uh, the, the one default I modes. Uh, for, when I used this uh, for the first couple of months, it was in um, a hiking mode or a walking mode. So it mm -hmm. will uh, have me uh, turn left and right on everything. And then uh, mm -hmm. after a couple of weeks, it uh, dawned on me that oh, he he was wanted me to drive on bike paths and. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's mine. Has the it has a couple modes like shortest distance, fastest time, you know, basic avoidances. But it doesn't seem to figure some of that stuff out. It's just like like if I set it on fastest time, no matter what, it will drive me fifty miles out of the way to get on an interstate, even though that will actually take more time. 
because it's like, well, there's a quarter of this trip is interstate. Therefore, it's fast. Like I, whoever programmed the algorithm needs to be like flogged in the city center because it's like, holy crap. Um, so I just I just I pull stuff up and then I just kind of audit the brutes and then, you know, I, I make it work. So that's the case. Yeah, hey, Joe, how's it going there? Joe jumped on. Greetings, Joe. Go ahead. In. Wait until it takes you into a boat launch. <laughs> yeah, been there. I've had that happen with this before. Yeah, I, I liked if if you look at my video, I forget. I think it's the video where I started traveling to Maine last year, and uh, I actually had some of the roads that it rude me on. Now, mind you, I had the GPS set to avoid dirt roads. It literally had me driving up a road with a bunch of grass growing out the middle of it. I'm like, am I even on a legal road? Um, I think the only reason I knew it was a legal road is because there was actually another guy on there with a big old truck. So here I'm in this bryant van bombing through this dirt road with grass growing out in the middle and tree branches. Like, God. Man, being being Maine, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a territory. Uh, that was uh, that was actually, it was either in uh, north central Pennsylvania or uh, south central New York. I forget where it was. Oh boy. Uh, it was, wasn't quite in Maine yet. But it was just on the way to Maine. But I, I remember having that that in the video that I did. So <laughs> it's pretty good. We need to bring back public flockings. Yes, for people who updated my Garmin to have crappier heart. Uh, maybe the uh, maybe the uh, person who uh, who coded uh, your latest update uh, um, um, is a fan of the uh, uh, Die Hard three movie where they are uh, driving the uh, shortcut through. Uh, and the uh, New York City Park. Yeah. Th that is possible. That's very possible. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like a logging <laughs> road. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, no, I, I, logging roads have less grass growing out the middle, actually. <laughs> I've been on many yeah. logging roads. Yeah, they're mostly All right. just um, dirt. I think we're going to wrap this one up here. Um, we do have a couple things happen on the Christian channel this week. We did a um we released a video on the complete jewish bible which is a it's allegedly like a protestant bible for messianic jews um but i released that um and i actually got a lot of uh a lot of reception a lot of people watch that uh so if you are uh, interested in seeing that review of a translation then you can see that tonight at nine which is about one hour from now we are premiering our amos chapter six so if you want to watch it, uh, I'll put the links in each of these uh, places to grab it. Of course, if you want to watch it explicitly on alt tech, give it a you know an, an hour or two after it goes live on the Tubies, and it should show up there. Uh, but you can actually go watch that Amos chapter six, the terror of the complacent. Uh, excuse me. Let me know uh, how you like that tomorrow. Um, uh, this time tomorrow, eight o'clock Eastern time tomorrow, uh, is going to be the weekly news roundup. And so, uh, stay tuned for that. And I think that that is, that'll bring us to an end for today. Thanks for watching guys. And we will catch you all next time. Goodbye.